how's it going everyone? This is going to be the unboxing portion of the Razer Edge Wi-Fi gaming tablet. So apparently this is an Android gaming tablet that comes with the Razer Kishi V2 controller, which I already have, and this one I have the Xbox version. But um, I got this tablet because I was actually really curious about it. I have been doing a little bit of mobile gaming and I was wondering like, what would it be like to have an Android dedicated um, gaming device? And honestly, why would Razer make a uh, product like this when we have phones? So come on, I was like, you know what? Let me spend the money. Let's see what the big hype is all about. So without further ado, let's actually open this box. As you see, there's like two stickers, one here. And there's one here. All right. Now that we got this out, open this box. Let's see, get started. Uh, I think this is a tablet right here. Yeah, this is the tablet. It's um, a little bit bigger than my S21 or 22 that I'm currently using to record this video. It's slightly bigger, but this is like a, one of those like S24 Plus phones. It doesn't really don't seem that big, but really cool. Let's take this off. All right. So yeah, this is the Wi-Fi model, by the way. So I did not get the 5G version. So eh, that kind of sucks, but you know what? I figured Honestly, I didn't need it, but I did wish I can get the two extra gigabytes of VRAM, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So the tablet right here looks really nice. I'm a little sleek. Definitely see a little slot right here to put your SD card in. Guess this will be like a little mic stand right there. Some speakers. Oh, I'm sorry, SD slots right here. So I wonder if like, these two are like speakers or something. That's interesting. SD card slot. USB-C uh, port right here with a little front camera, which hmm, that really is a tablet. Also, it looks like, I kind of like the bezels right here, so it looks like it has a brief, like where the um, whole processor can breathe. I do know that this has active cooling with the fan, which is kind of the reason why I got because my phone gets extremely hot when playing some Android games, especially like Tower of Fantasy while charging. Don't ever play Tower of Fantasy while your phone is plugged in charging. That will definitely burn up your battery. In your phone. Let's see what else I get. Razor Edge. All right. Uh, I guess this is a pamphlet with all the. That explains everything. Okay. Cool. So you do get like a little nice little pamphlet. Of course you get the Razor stickers. I got plenty of those. Uh, true. Yep. The way it folds. <laughs> Why? Why can't you just make it normal? So here you go. So this will be. Basically just telling you everything and how to put the tablet in the controller, pass through charging, one year warranty on the t on the um, tablet and the controller. Okay, how to turn it on, put the micro SD card in, yada yada. All right, cool. All right, uh, let's see what else is in here. USB-C cable and this is honestly about it. This is a clean box, I have to give it. I really do like this box, very clean. Um, yeah, nothing else in the box, so. And this is the um, uh, Razer 2, uh, Razer Kishi V2 controller. So it's funny because I actually have the Xbox version of the Razer Kishi V2, which is here. Uh, don't mind this little red stuff right here. This is honestly because of my cheap phone case. I had to find a very thin phone case on the market. But um, let me put these aside. Putting these to the side, they are exactly the same. You even got the charger port, USB, two extra programmable buttons. Yeah, this is exactly the same as my other V2 controller. Even like the little pads right here are the same, so. Hmm. Um, I have to say though, I mean, it is a nice comfortable controller to use for um, PC, so. Or sorry for for Android, so, but um, yeah, exactly the same with the way how the Kishi Two is honestly the same thing. So, but let's put these things two two things aside. Let's check out this tablet. 
All right, so I take it that this may be the on and off switch right here. Usually you hold it for three seconds. Something should power up. There we go. Powerboy Android with the Razer um, logo coming on. So that's me know right there that this is how it's being run. Now you can see we've got some tutorial. Welcome to Edge. Let me just skip all this. Agreement. Skip this. Read that. United States. All right, let me connect this to Wi-Fi. All right, so while this is getting ready, um, yeah, it's not really much to say about the tablet. Um, let's go uh, play some games on it and I will tell you my experience of setting up this tablet as far as um, with all my Android games and stuff. So without further ado, yeah, let's, um, let's get started. All right, now let's get into the specs of this device. First off, I would like to say that the Razer Edge has a beautiful screen. The screen is a 6 by 0.8 inch screen, 144 hertz AM OLED display, 2400 by 1080 resolution. The CPU is a Snapdragon G3X Gen 1, which is a custom CPU chip for this device. For the RAM, the Wi-Fi edition of this device only supports six gigabytes of RAM, but if you have the 5G version of this device, you can get this for what comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. The storage for this device comes with a built-in 128 gigabyte storage and can accept micro SD cards with up to two terabytes. Um, you can use Wi-Fi uh, 6E for connecting this device to your Wi-Fi to download all your games from the Google Play Store. And it has built-in Bluetooth with Bluetooth 5.2 for connecting all your wireless controllers and headsets to this device. The battery in, built into this device is a 41.44 uh, watt battery, which should give you around like nine hours of battery life. Um, it's actually a really good device so far with some pretty decent specs. I was actually pretty surprised. All right, moving along, let's talk about the Razer Keisha V2 Pro, which is the controller that comes with the Razer Edge right here. So this controller right here is the Razer Keisha V2 Pro. And so, and this one's actually the exact same controller, but just the Xbox edition. One of the cool things I like about this controller is that it has two programmable buttons right here. So this will be like M1, this will be M2, which you can program with the Nexus, Razer Nexus software. Um, the controller also has like these rubber pads on the inside of them that can be removed. So if you're like somebody that's like has a phone case, just by removing this seal off and, and then putting your phone, connecting this um, controller to your phone with a phone case on, it should work. Now, mind you, if you have one of those like heavy duty, like thick phone cases, taking off this rubber seal may not work for you. And as you see, like with my Xbox one, this is the main one I use for my phone. I just remove the rubber seal off completely. Um, another cool thing about this controller besides supporting X input and D input is that it supports a software called the Razer Nexus software. So actually let me plug my Razer Edge in. If I can get it in, there we go. So a cool thing about it is, is as soon as I plug my, um, my, this contr my Kishi controller into the Razer Edge, it automatically opens up the software. So the software will start off with open up and showing you all the games that you currently have downloaded to your device or razor edge or phone also was a cool thing is that you can see all the current um mobile games apps that was popular that you can download or you can go into the store to um pay for it if if it's a pay for game um you can see what's cool on like all the streaming um sites as well for like say for instance if you want to string xbox game pass on this device you can see all that cool stuff and you can see like all the personal recommendations that they recommend for you to play on this device as well um, the cool thing about this device too is, is the fact that you can also live stream to your YouTube channel and you can live stream to Facebook Live, which I didn't know people still stream to Facebook Live, but that's it's cool that it gives you that option. Of course, right here is where you'll be able to change the controller input. So say for instance, if you want to change it from X input, you could change it to D input or HID mode, or you can use this hybrid mode, which is called the X input plus, which basically is like a smart version of this, of this controller. So basically the controller will basically switch between X input or D input, depending on what game you're playing. I personally like to pick for myself because sometimes when there's a game that works better with X input, it will use HID mode and vice versa. So I just switch it myself. It's really easy to do. This is also where you can remap the two programmable buttons that I mentioned earlier, and you can update the firmware of this controller. And actually, as a matter of fact, because this controller supports X input, 
I think I have a way of actually plugging this up to my computer and testing the joystick accuracy and input latency of this of both of these controllers actually. Yeah, actually, yeah, let's let's see. I think I can actually test the joystick accuracy and input latency of this controller. So yeah, without further ado, let's test this. So with a little bit of tinkering and also leaving this controller in X input mode thanks to the Nexus app, I was able to plug this controller up to my PC and the controllers actually detected as an X input device. As you see, these are all the buttons right here and even detects the two programmable buttons of that too. So with this controller now being seen as an X input device, this means I can do a joystick accuracy test on this controller. So without further ado, let's do a joystick accuracy test. All right, and one swoop, let's see what we get. All right, so looks like ah, this is all over the place. It gets worse with it the more I spin it. Yeah, it's like a nine to ten percent error rate. Um, it looks like the sticks go all the way around, so it's not too bad. It's pretty evened out. But um, yeah, this is this is a mobile controller. I'm actually surprised I was actually able to plug this up to my PC with all the crazy tinkering I just did. But yeah, looks like a nine to ten percent error rate on each stick. Without further ado, let's do an uh, input latency test because I'm really curious about that. All right, guys, so here we are on X input tester. So right now I have this controller hooked up to my PC with this crazy connection and I got this next input mode, which means that I could do a joystick accuracy test. So without further ado, let's do a joystick accuracy test. All right, this actually is looking really good. Um, better than I thought. All right, then it looks like that this control has a polling rate of 258 with the average input latency of 3.86. So this clearly this controller aims for a 250 pulling rate and a four millisecond input latency, but it got a slightly better than 250. So yeah, this is actually a really good numbers for this controller. All right, moving along. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna show you some mobile games playing on the Razor Edge. So the games I'm gonna show you is Call of Duty Warzone Mobile, Snowbreak, and the new solo leveling game. So without further ado, here is some gameplay on the Razor Edge Wi-Fi edition. What's your buck? Request target marked. Request fires. Change man. Complete. Awaiting orders. Leave it to Big Sis. I was hoping we'd avoid this. Leave it to me. Time for a 
It's no use. Careless. I see it all. Alright guys, now I'm about to show you some gameplay of some emulation done on the Razor Edge. So without further ado, I'm going to show you PlayStation 2 and PSP emulation. Enjoy. <laughs> Alright guys, so now let's show some game streaming on the Razor Edge. So what I'm going to do is show you some gameplay of me using the Xbox Cloud app on the Razor Edge device. Can help it! Win! Fall back! 
So I've owned the Razer Edge Wi-Fi edition since April 2024 of this year. And here are my thoughts on this Android device. I would like to say if this device was going for the original asking price of 400 USD, I would not recommend this device to anyone. But nowadays you can find this device for anywhere between 250 to 300 USD. If, I, if you can get this device closer to the 250 mark, then I'll definitely say that this is a great device for playing majority of different Android games and for great for emulation. The Razer Kishi V2 Pro controller that's paired with the Razer Edge device is actually a really great controller. Com combination with the support of the Razer Nexus app, it is a great device and you can find the controller separately for about 100 USD and that is for the regular version and the uh, Xbox edition of this controller. Another cool thing about this device is that the Razer uh, Nexus app does allow you to play um, basically touchscreen only games with the Razer Kishi V2 Pro controller. So you can basically map any games, like say for instance, Call of Duty Mobile, you can map all of the controls to your Kishi V2 controller and you can game away as if you're using a standard controller for Call of Duty Mobile or any other uh, touchscreen only games for the Android, um, basically for the Razer Kishi V2 Pro. I would like to also point out that this device is actually great for streaming your games on. So because of the Wi-Fi 6E um, chip that's inside the Razer Edge Wi-Fi edition, it is a really good device for streaming Xbox Cloud Gaming and for streaming Steam Link to this device. Um, paired with a really fast router, I have experienced little to no latency when using Steam Link playing games on my Razer Edge Wi-Fi edition while I'm laying in bed or like I'm sitting on the couch so I won't have to sit at my desk all the time just to play my favorite um, Steam games I normally play on PC. And the cool thing about the Razer Edge device is that the Razer Edge also works well as just a regular tablet. The tablet itself, it has really good speakers for you watching any YouTube videos or watching any like movies or whatever you want to do. And it's pretty fast for like handling everyday task of like a typical Android tablet user. The front uh, five millimeter camera on it is pretty garbage. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's nice as there. So if you are somebody who likes to video chat while you're home and you don't want to use your phone, I mean, it's good for that. But other than that, I really wouldn't recommend that taking pictures with the camera. I mean, the camera's pretty garbage, to be honest with you. Also, another thing about the Razer Edge is that I'm I'm a little concerned about is the support for the Razer Edge device. So as I was like using my Razer Edge device, I noticed that there are two games that are for some reason not compatible with the Razer Edge Wi-Fi edition. That happens to be Devil, the Devil May Cry Pika Combat game and Punishing Gray Ravens. For some reason, those apps are not compatible with the Razer Edge, which I don't understand why, because if my Galaxy S22 can play those games, I know for a fact that the Razer Edge can easily play both of those games. And actually, as in one point, I did have the Devil May Cry Pika Combat game installed on the Razer Edge when Devil May Cry game first came out. So why the game isn't, why these games are not compatible with the Razer Edge, I don't know. I don't know if Razer can do something about it or these companies can do something about it, but it is something to point out that's a little concerning about this device. Another thing about the Razer Edge is that even though the Razer Edge you can get as low as like 250 USD, the fact is, is that the Razer Edge is competing with something like the Nintendo Switch Lite, which is around 200 USD. Now, I don't know about you, but I ain't gonna lie, the Nintendo Switch has a much greater and better gaming lineup compared to just any Android device, not only upside to the Razer Edge compared to the Nintendo Switch, is that the Razer Edge also supports emulation up to the PS2 and GameCube error. So if you're somebody who's looking for um, like a device that could play Android games and can do emulation, then yeah, I can recommend the Razer Edge. Now I do have to say that if you saw the skip in in my PSP and PlayStation 2 um, emulation videos, you will notice that there was a little bit of skip in. I noticed that the Razer Edge usually skips when emulation when it comes to having all your all your games on the SD card, which I do have installed onto my Razer Edge. But when I usually move the games over to the eternal storage, the games play perfectly fine for some reason. So I don't know why that is. Hopefully I can fix it or maybe it's something I did and maybe I didn't lay the SD card incorrectly. Hopefully so. But if not, then that is something I do have to bring up about the Razer Edge device. Overall, I will have to say though, for if you can get the Razer Edge Wi-Fi edition for around 
$250. I would definitely say like this is actually a great Android device for playing majority of different Android games and for playing emulation on this device. And if you're also looking for something that's like a pocket size, like a fit into your pocket, the Razer Edge is definitely the, the device for you. So without further ado, yeah, that's my thoughts on the Razer Edge device. And also the Razer Keisha V2 Pro Controller. It is a great mobile controller. So if you don't want to get the Razer Edge or you already got an Android device more powerful than the um, Razer Edge, then yeah, if you need a Keisha V2 Pro Controller for $100 with the mobile app, I would definitely say the controllers itself is actually a really good bargain. And I would definitely recommend the controller over something like the Backbone controller. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. If you made it this far in the video and found this video very informative, you should do me a favor and like this video for me. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to let you guys know when the next time I release another controller review, that's either going to be on main controller side or the mobile controller. And um, as far as reviewing more like Android handheld devices, I don't know if I'm going to be doing something like that. I mean, I'm probably going to have to open up a Patreon because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not balling like that. But uh, if you want to support me in a free way, all you have to do is just like my videos, I'll subscribe to my channel, and also just make your comments about recommendations that you guys want me to review, and also things I can improve on. I really do read all you guys' comments, and I do appreciate all the feedback. But until then, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.